In the light of the seven, I now proclaim Tommon of the House Baratheon, first of his name, King of the Andals and the First Men, and Lord of the Seven Kingdoms. Long may he reign! Long may he reign! When it comes to psychological manipulation, which uh, no matter how nice and sincere a person Marjorie is her heart, she's getting quite good at, then, you know, it should be easier with a younger brother who seems to be quite a sincere, genuine human being. But of course, the big hurdle will be Cersei. I think there is a begrudging respect between Marjorie and Cersei, and it's just like a, a, a small moment of cathartic comparison, understanding. I think that's her game again, you know, is to kind of elicit some sense of friendship from her. Your Grace? There he is. Long may he reign. Long may he reign. You know, and also she, she knows. She knows how beautiful Marjorie is. She knows she's smart and a politician and she doesn't want to lose another son. You know, she's watched Joffrey be sucked in by it. Hmm. And in a way, it's a shame because you think, well, if Cersei and Marjorie had become friends and team players, then, um, you know, it could be quite different story. It's almost as if circumstances around them force them to be enemies. He will need help if he's going to rule well. He has you. A mother is not enough. You're still interested in being queen, I take it. <laughs> After all that's happened. Definitely Marjorie is surprised when uh, Cersei offers her son, but she doesn't trust her as far, neither woman trusts each other as far as they can throw them. So it's like, okay, she's letting me marry him, why? <laughs>